Okay, so we've talked a little bit about traversability. And now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how we can use a path to demonstrate. How do we communicate this? So, for example, if I want to demonstrate that this figure is traversable, I could go B, D, A, B, C, D. And if I were to follow that path, you'll see that I demonstrate this path is traversable. This one is not traversable. No matter how many times I try it, I will end up not being able to get to all the pieces. We don't know how to explain that it's not traversable. That's what we're missing right now. So we're gonna engage in some data collection to try to figure out a way to prove, to securely and reliably express that it's not possible. Start with this one. Would you please determine if this is traversable? And if it is, give me a list of letters to show it's traversable. Yeah. Can you go through the same letter again? Yes, you can. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Um, hold on just one second. Let's get, does somebody have a sample? Somebody have, yeah, Ava, what do you got? C, D, E, C, A, B, C. So she's communicated with us what she thinks is a valid path. I'm going to follow that now. I'm going to start at C, and I'm going to travel to D, and then down to E, back up to C, back up to A, down to B, to C. Do you guys agree that that covered the entire thing? So therefore, is this shape traversable? Yeah. yeah. Ava showed it. Could you have chosen a different path that would work? Totally. Raise your hand if you found a different path that works. Beautiful. Multiple solutions still makes it possible. Please try the next one. Find a sample path that works for this shape. Can I get a new volunteer, please, to give us their path? Yes, sir, I'm back there. Elvis. A, B, A, C, B. A, B, A, C, B. Looks great. Therefore, we now know it's traversable, right? There are other paths, other solutions, but that one works. Do the same for the third one, please. Go. What's our confidence level with determining whether a shape is traversable or not? Five, I can do it every time. Three, I have a pretty good handle on it. One, I don't know how to do this. I keep getting lost. It's very frustrating. Okay, good. You should be holding hands up next to your chest so I can see them at this point. Okay, hands down. Any questions? 
in order to do our job here and discover when shapes are traversable and when they're not, without going through the grunt process of just doing it, we're going to have some new vocabulary words. We're going to start with something called a network, which is a collection of points and interconnecting paths. Here are points, and then there are paths connecting them. Points, paths connecting them. A path is either a straight line or a curve that connects two points. And in the world of networks, we're actually not going to call them points. We're going to call them nodes, which is where two paths meet. Anytime two or more paths meet, that's a node. And we've talked about traversability. We need to define just a little bit more here. All six of these shapes are considered nodes with a certain number of paths coming out of them. And I'm going to classify these six shapes as even nodes. But over here, these six are examples of odd nodes. So please take a moment, talk with your neighbors, and figure out what a good definition for an even node would be and a good definition for an odd node. Go, talk. Can I get somebody new to please give me their definition of an even node? Yeah, Brooklyn. Good. Even number of, what do we call these lines coming out of them? Paths. Good. Even number of paths coming out of the node. And thus an odd node would be someone else? Yeah. Good. A node with an odd number of paths coming out. Now let's check and see. You guys will fill in your definitions there. But I want to check and make sure that you all know how to do this. So this is an entire network now. It only has two nodes and two paths. But I'd like to ask you on the count of three, on the count of three, I want you to tell me out loud, even or odd for this node. On the count of three, either say even or odd. Is this an even node or an odd node? One, two, three. Even. Even, excellent. There's two paths coming out of it. Here's the one that messes with people. I want you to look at this node, and I want you to tell me on the count of three whether it's an even node or an odd node. Ready? One, two, three. This is an even node. So picture the classroom as the node. Look around. This whole room is now our node. How many different ways could you escape this room? How many different doorways could you take out of this room? Look carefully. Three, behind the screen is another door. So since there's three doorways out of this room, it's like a node with three paths coming out. Would this be an even node or an odd node? Odd. Does it matter that you can go out this door, circle around, come back into this door? Doesn't matter. It's about how many times you can leave the room, not what the path does after that. So this is an even node because there's two paths coming out. Okay? Any questions on whether nodes are even or odd? All right. What I've put together for you is a series of networks, and we're going to do some data collection on this. So A, I've already done for you. You'll notice that this left-hand node has one path coming out, therefore I've labeled it odd. This second node has two paths coming out, so I've labeled it even. And this third one has one path coming out, so I've labeled it odd. I'm now going to take that data 
Guys, you want to pay attention to this, please? Gavin? So now I'm going to take this data and I'm going to collect it in this little table. So for picture A, which this one is, A, how many odd nodes do I have? One, two. So I write a two there. How many even nodes do I have? One. Is this shape traversable? I could start here and draw a line this way and cover it all. So yes, it's traversable. Let's do the same thing with B. Is this an even or an odd node? Odd, odd. so I'll put a node there. Is this an even or an odd node? Even. It's got two, that's even, so I'll put an E there. Odd. And then this one is odd. Therefore, how many odd nodes does B have? Two, how many even nodes? One, is it traversable? Yep, just did it. Yes. What about C? Even or odd here? Odd, one. What about this one? One, two, three, odd. 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 What about this one? One, two, that's an even number. This one, even, this one, even. even. So how many odds did I write? How many O's did I write? Two. Two, how many evens or how many E's did I write? Three, is this one possible to traverse? Mm -hmm. Where should I start? Start from the top, like up here? Yeah. Okay, if I go down. Okay, so I go left, come right. I'm stuck going that oh, way. Start from here. Oh, yeah. If I go here, oh, it's like a four, isn't it? Some people draw their fours that way. You go up, over, and so it's traversable, isn't it? So let's put a yes there. Okay, what about D? Would you please label this as even or odds and transcribe that data into your table? and determine if it's traversable or not. Hey, everybody get the same data I did. Take a look up there. I got four, two, and no. We all agree with that? Okay. I make mistakes sometimes. So if you see you got different data, I want you to tell me. Okay, I got some data. Can we agree on this and the thumbs up? No question. Are the dots called nodes? The dots are called nodes, yeah. And a lot of times people mistakenly call this even node. I don't know why. This one often is called an even node. Why is it odd? Because it's three. It's three. Okay. So, next we're now the challenge is you see I highlighted in yellow three things A, B, and C. Why did I choose to highlight those three? Because they're all traversable. And D is different. It's not traversable. I want you to come up with a rule. Given this data, that would let you predict whether something is traversable or not. Don't say it out loud. There's several rules available. 
So if you think of one that works, I want you to write it right to the right. Thing. If blank, then the network is traversable. You know that if that's not true, it's not traversable. Network comes with rules of this yourself. Don't ask your neighbors yet. If blank, then it's traversable. Right about this side there. Just to what is it that's common with A, B, and C and is different for D? You're just looking at the table. You're not trying to bring in other evidence. Think of one, so you can think of another one, because there's several. Forget about the odd nodes. It's all about the even nodes. And if the even nodes have an odd number, 113, it works. If the even nodes have an even number, two, it doesn't work. That's not the only rule, but you guys agree that that rule works. If the number of even nodes is odd, then the network is first. Can we agree that works? Right. Not the only answer. Does somebody have a different answer? Okay. Um, if the even are low, even nodes are not nodes. No, our network has to be even. Okay. If when you add up even and odds, like for A, two plus one is three, and B, two plus one is three, and C, two plus three is five. Those are all odd numbers. But if they add up to be even, like four plus two, then it doesn't work, right? And so if the sum of the even and odd nodes means the addition function. And I think what you said is that if they add up to be even, then you meant they wouldn't be true. So I'm going to phrase it the other way. Right? So it has to be odd. Is on then it's the worst. Okay, good. Do you guys agree that works? Told you that. Is there another one? Um, if the number of odd nodes is two. Okay, so now you're saying the even nodes don't even matter. It's just about the odd nodes. And if that number is two, it's reversible. And it's four, it's not. And you're saying, I don't care, well, it could be anything else, but it's only two that matters. If exactly two odd nodes, and traversal. Can we agree based on this data that that works? Yeah. yeah what else? Max, get another one. Uh, if there's if the odd nodes, we would even nodes, or at least one number of other. Nice. So, whereas we had some here adding them, at most one number of other. Good. So, if the difference, right, if you subtract them, two minus one, two minus one, three minus two, all those are one apart. But four minus two is two. It has to be two apart, and they're too far apart. Now it's not reversible. So if the difference between even and odd is, you said at least one, at most, at most one. Oh, so it is uh, less than or equal to one. That is commercial, right? You guys agree that works? All these rules apply to this data. They're all great answers. Any more? It's enough, certainly. As a class, we can come up with a good set for him. I want each of you to pick one of these. 
and write it on your little chart to the right there. This is the rule that you think applies to all scenarios based on the standard. Once you've done that, and again, you might've already written one and you're good. Now I want you to do it again with all the shapes here in five. There's a table underneath and you'll notice that I've filled in some of the table for you to make it easier. So please do E, F, G, H, I, J, K, and L. You just pick one of those and work. You're gonna pick one of those and write that to the right grade. Yes, you have a raise. You raise yours good, you got to do that. Yep, draw it. You don't want all of these. You want to pick one. Yeah. That's why I raised. Okay. Yeah, this is the Thank you. Now, although doing this counting and creating a chart is important data collection for it, that's not really the skill I'm trying to get for you. So if you've done some of it, you haven't quite finished, I'd like you to look at my chart now and copy down my answers. And if you finish, I want you to look at my answers and make sure that I got them correct. Make sure your chart matches mine. Okay. Can we agree? Any answers? Yeah, yeah. Give me another minute to get it all copied down. So what we did is we started before with just four sets of data and we created all these rules that we predicted words and then every network would follow those rules. We now have more data and I've chosen what the data is to help break some of these rules. So some of these rules won't work anymore. The number of E nodes is odd. E has odd number of even nodes, and that's still traversal. So that works. F has an even number of even nodes, therefore, it shouldn't be traversal and it's not. But what data in here breaks this rule? <clears throat> yeah. 
I my guess is it's an even number of even nodes, and yet it's traversal. In fact, G would also break it, right? Because G has that odd number of even nodes, and it's not traversal. So if this rule didn't play out, it doesn't work. Now we've got more data to see that. What about the next one? The sum of the even and odd nodes is an odd number. So it works for E, and it works for F. Doesn't work for K. Doesn't work for I. Doesn't work for G. Great. So that one's out. What about the third one? Exactly two odd nodes. That still apply? Yes. That one's good. That one still works. What about the difference between the even and odds is less than or equal to one? Which one breaks it? Okay. In this case, two. Do we have a new rule? Anybody come up with a new rule? Yeah. There's more even than odds. If there's more even than odds, but didn't we break that with A, B, C, or D? Yeah, A and B both had more odds than E. Right. So you're right. For this data, we're, we're, we've got more data now. Let's keep all our data. There's only one choice left, right? So unless you have another rule to throw out there, all of us are going to be writing to the right exactly two odd nodes. Yeah. But it has two or less odd nodes. Two or less. Do we have any data to suggest that it's less? Could be, could be, could be two or 17, right? Yeah. So we can't say that yet because we don't have any data about that. Okay, so everybody write this as your rule. Oops. That is already the case. The one in the and then move on to box six and do the last four shapes. They're all circle rates. Figure out the number of even and odd nodes. Figure out whether it's super or go on the chart. <laughs> That's not yeah, yeah. It's not about the it's not about the it's just making that block. How many lines can I have that block? Yeah. One, one down the inside. Three. 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 So that's yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Can one of you show us that, like, thing of a uh, circle and it said it was two? Uh, how? How is it possible? Would this, would, would M be three? Would it be three nodes? M has two odd nodes, right? Because the one in the center has one tap for that, which is odd. And the one on the edge has three taps in there, but up, down, and sideways. So that's also odd. Then you choose zero. So this node has how many paths coming out of it? One is not a number, it's going to be pretty close. Oh, I guess. Well, no, it's two, isn't it? It's got one going this way. One going out of the whole time. It's going to be a line. That's why there's nothing to do with two, but it's going to be a line. Uh, yeah, so this is one, this is two, this is three. It's got three different paths coming out. There's going to be a line node. So in our chart, we're going to say there's two odd nodes and zero even nodes. This is a
Please take a look at the screen and again validate that you have the same information I have. Is this activity is really about analyzing the data, not so much about collecting it. Does your rule still hold? Why not? Because of any. We said that every time you have an attack in two odd nodes, it's traversable. And that still holds true. Every time there's two odd nodes, it's traversable. But there's something else now. What else could also be traversable? If it's two or zero. Two or zero, which is what you were trying to say earlier, right? Two or fewer. Could it be one? Maybe one, yeah, I don't know. We don't know. Could you please try to draw a network with exactly one odd node? Give yourself another piece of data and find out if there's one odd node would be traversable. And remember that you can't have paths to nowhere. We have two zones in here. We still have those. Here's no high. All right, did somebody come up with a successful network with one node? No one? Max did? You want to go to the board and draw it for us, Max, please? Hmm. You guys agree that has one odd node? We agree this is an odd node? What's this one? Odd also. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so what's this one? Odd node. And this one has one, two, three, four, five. So you want to add one more and see what happens? So now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So now this is even, but that makes this one, two, three, four, five. That makes this one odd. It doesn't work, does it? Close. Anybody have success making one odd node? Yeah, let's try it. Sure, please. Odd. Show me what you mean. No, because the top of the path has to go somewhere. It can't just be left. So that's gotta be a node to end it. <laughs> so there is a node there. You can't just end the path which makes two odds, right? You can't, it, it ends on a node. Yeah, no, I don't think there's a way. 
I don't think there's a way to do it. We can't have just one odd node. So what we're saying is that it must be two or zero odd nodes. Do you guys agree with the data we've found that with two or zero odd nodes, it's traversable? No, Max, you're still not buying that? What do the rest of you guys think? Five, that is a rule I can stand behind. Three, I guess I'm sort of thinking that's right, but I'm not really convinced. One, I don't believe it. Put your hands up. Give me five, three, one. Okay. All right. Those of you with ones, why don't you believe it? But you guys made a pattern of my outfit today. And do you think Monday there's a fair chance that your guess is right? Yeah. And that's the reason you may not always be right, but sometimes it's right. So just because we use inductive reasoning doesn't mean it's not a valid conclusion. It just means it's not a reliable. So it still could be right. We could have gotten one. Based on the data, can we all agree that two or zero says it's traversable? Why don't you feel convinced? There are a lot of things that were keeping you from saying, yes, I know that's true. I have to try all the tricks. Because that's the whole basis of inductive reasoning is that there's more and more examples that could come in and blow it, like my purple erasers. The pattern could change, just like it did several times in this activity. You had a rule that worked, and suddenly with new examples, shoot, that doesn't work anymore. So trying to convince somebody using a pattern of evidence shouldn't work so well. But the other way we can convince somebody is using deductive reasoning. I'm going to try to convince you using deductive reasoning. We're talking about traversable networks. And in a traversable network, I should be able to stick my pencil down and draw through it all, and it makes a consistent path. Agreed? So I'm going to now trace a network. It's in invisible ink, so you can't see it on this page right now. But there's a network that I'm going to trace. How do I start? Putting my pencil down on some node somewhere and, create, and following a path. Does everybody agree that's how it starts? And at that moment, if I pause, did I create an even or an odd node here? There's one path coming out, so it starts as an odd node, doesn't it? And at some point in the path, I go into a node and I come out. I'm still in the middle of my journey. And I go into a node and I come out. And I go into a node and I come out. Every time I go in and out of a node, what's the nature of that node? Even. And even if I come back and wrap through an existing even node, I go in and I come out. I just added two to two. Will that still be an even number or does it change? It's still even, isn't it? Even if I do it again, in and out. That turned that even node into an even node again. And then I go in and out. I'm not affecting these. These are all still even if they're in the middle of my path, aren't they? Even if I come back over here to my starting point and I go in and out, What's the nature of this node? It's still odd. So I created an odd node by starting. And as long as I'm still in the middle of my traversing path, no matter what nodes I go through don't matter until I stop. The end of my traversable network. I arrive in it and I don't leave it. What's the nature of this? Odd. And even if I had come back around and ended on one of these points, I change now that even number to an odd number. So there's gonna be an odd node at the start, and there's gonna be an odd node at the end. 
Agreed? Wherever I start, that becomes an odd node. And wherever I end, that becomes an odd node. So that explains why there's two odd nodes. If there are three odd nodes, what that means is, even though I followed the whole path, start to finish, at some point there was an opportunity for me to go off on a plank and walk the plank and end up stuck. That's why it's non-traversable if I have three or four or five odd nodes. We also couldn't do a single odd node. So that doesn't exist. What about zero odd nodes? What does that mean, Ash? Excellent. It's where the start and the end are the same. So you end up changing that last odd node back into an even. That's why there's two or zero odd nodes. Five. I am now convinced it makes sense to me that you can have two odd nodes start and the end, or you can have zero odd nodes where you start and end in the same place. Five. Crystal clear. Three. Sort of. Even. Still not really convinced. One. I don't believe it. Some people really but is it more than when we just did inductive? Now, remember the king that probably did last night? That was actually a story that happened some years ago, a couple hundred. There it is. I'll wait a second. Ever have too many tabs open? So here's the story. It was called the Seven Bridges of Konigsberg and it was in 1735. And the king charged Leonard Euler, his mathematician with this task. And he said, find out how I can do this. And Euler, the mathematician, decided to take this picture. This is what you had in your homework last night. And looked at it a different way. He said, there are these four different land masses. And within those four different land masses, I've got these small little paths going between them. So really what I can think about it as is these four nodes with paths going between them. In other words, I could represent this map with this network diagram. And he actually created fields of mathematics based out of this. This is how your computer networks, your Wi-Fi, the internet, cell phones, all those stuff come out of this idea, as well as topographical things, topologies, maps. Looking at this, is this an even or an odd node? Odd. Is this an even or an odd node? Is this an even or an odd node? And this one? So if I've got four odd nodes, is this network traversable? No, why not? Because you need two or zero. Two happens with a start and an end. Zero happens when they start and end in the same place. Therefore, this is not traversable. You could make it that way by, for instance, adding another bridge, like some people suggested, or taking a bridge away. All right. Our goal here was to use a specific example that's kind of interesting and fun to see the difference between inductive and deductive reasoning. When we did the pattern, we kept coming up with rules, but some of the rules were working. Inductive reasoning is unreliable. Deductive reasoning, when I tried to explain logically why there were what there were, made more sense. Come again. Uh, um, I'm going to give you a couple more examples of in that That's really the lesson. So, Saturday I was walking along and I came to this spot in the street that I decided to stand there and look at this very pretty building across the street. And while I stood there, a woman walked up and she answered the door. And she came out holding a paper bag. And she opened up the paper bag 
and suddenly the whole street is filled with the smells of fresh baked bread. I got hungry for bread. And I sat there a few more minutes, and another woman came out and walked in. One came out and opened up this paper bag, and suddenly I smelled a fresh baked bread. I didn't have much to do, so this happened 10,000 times in a row. Using inductive reasoning, what can you predict? Talk to your neighbors. No, you can clean up the reasoning only restrict your brains because most times we use both i just want you to use in depth reasoning what can you conclude it will most likely be bread. It's going to happen again. Those are two different things. When you say it's going to happen again, if a woman walks down the street and walks into this building, when she comes out, she'll open up the bag and I'll smell fresh baked bread. That's the pattern. If you said it's a bakery, if you said she'll go in and buy some bread, if you said a man would do this, you're expanding the pattern to something else. Inductive reasoning is weak. It only says if there's a pattern, that exact pattern will continue. Make sense? Okay. Um, let's say I've got my lunch bag. That's the paper bag. And I reach in and I pull out a banana. Yeah. And I reach in and I pull out a banana. Put it down. And I reach in and I pull something out. If you're only using inductive reasoning, you're yeah. turning off half your brain, you're just using inductive reasoning, what can you predict? Gonna I'm going to pull out a banana. Put it down. Now, I'm going to tell you some more data. In my lunch bag, I have two bananas and one orange. I reach in and I pull out a banana. Reach in, I pull out a man. I reach in, what am I going to pull out? I can't pull out a banana because there isn't one. I know that there were two bananas and an orange. I pulled out the two bananas, all that's left is an orange. What kind of reason is that? Deduct, right? Logic. This is the way lawyers make their cases time and time again using logic. Okay, you have the rest of the period to fill this in. You'll see that it's asking you for the definition that's still up on the board here. If you want to use mine, if you want to word it yourself, you can do that and apply it to a few scenarios. Give it to English with the inductive and deductive reasoning. These three pages, as well as the one page you did for last night's homework, on Monday, I'll teach you guys how to submit that in Canvas. Hold on to these for the weekend. If you're worried you're going to lose them, let me know. I don't know the great homework for you. But you'll submit them for homework on Monday. Okay. Yes. Uh, but with this data, it would be not for sure. Well, when we started talking about the Kingston, and I said the next slide on the end, you see that as well. That would be the answer. Okay, this is the question. I'm going to see This will be the one I want. 